Hi everyone, this is Kai. Thank you for stopping by my channel. Today I have a super fun 3D cinema roll peach set using the Mayo Peach Collection. I was really inspired by these lovely creators here. I will make sure to link all of their Instagrams down in the description if you want to check out their work. In particular, the little tutorial on the right is what I used to create this cute cinema roll peach here. Most of the charms on this nail set are done by hand. The ones that are not are the little hearts and the bow, but all of the peach elements I made myself. Here is the set that I will be using, and here's a disclaimer. So if you are going to be doing your nails at home, please, please remember to wear gloves or try to avoid contact as much as possible with uncured gel. And don't forget protection for your hands if you are doing your own manicure and sticking your hands into the UV light. I got the idea for this disclaimer from Nails Box of Hope. I will link her channel down below as well. She does awesome Japanese Korean inspired nail art and she's very close to a thousand followers. So please go check out her channel. So here is actually just a nail tip that I've stuck on a stand and wrapped some tin foil over. This is what I'm currently using to do my 3D modeling on, my 3D sculpting before I stick it to the actual nail if I'm trying to test a design. I've also seen people use like a nail form, but the tin foil nail tip trick works best for me. I think it gives you the sturdiest base to work on. I am just pulling out my McCart 4-in-1 solid nail glue. This stuff I do like for sculpting. It is very sturdy. It will stay in place. I did pick up some sculpting clay from AliExpress though that I am excited to try in the future. I do like this product, but I find when I'm trying to sculpt something super, super thin, it stretches out a little bit too much and doesn't hold its shape. So here I am just using some silicone tools to form a nice juicy peach shape. As you'll see later, I actually make this one too small, so I did go back in and redo it in a larger size once I had figured out exactly how big I wanted this charm in its entirety to be. But for now, I'm thinking it looks good. I go ahead and cure it. I also peel it off once I've cured the top and put it back under upside down to make sure that the bottom also gets cured. And now I'm pulling out a little bit more of that four in one nail glue making just a round shape for the head of cinema roll. That sounds strange out of context. Um, but here's where I'm realizing that the peach that I made was maybe a little bit too small. I wanted the peach to be overall bigger than cinema roll's head, not including his little ears. I know doing 3D sculpting with gel can seem kind of daunting for some people, but I've found that the best way to look at it is in terms of shapes, work one shape at a time. So I made the peach first, got that set how I wanted. You cure that, you make sure it's all good to go and hardened. Then you start adding the other shapes on top of it. So the cinema roll I make in four different shapes. I do his head, each paw separately, and then each ear separately, curing in between everything. That way, if I like something, I don't accidentally mess it up by attaching another piece that I then have to go back in and remove. Working this way just makes the process so much easier, so much less daunting. If you just work piece by piece, kind of like anything in life, you know, if you have a large task ahead of you, break it down into steps, do a little bit at a time, and then it doesn't seem so scary. Speaking of large tasks, I know I've been very MIA on my channel here over the past two weeks. I'm shooting for one video a week, though, once summer kicks in, hoping to get out two, but this past week has just been very chaotic. Um, past two weeks, actually, had the dance at school, and the seniors will be graduating next week since I am the staff representative for both the seniors and the student council at my school. It just means the end of the year is quite busy for me, but... It also is really rewarding. Um, the seniors actually had their last day yesterday, so that was a very bittersweet moment, but we are now looking forward to their actual graduation ceremony next week, and of course, the end of school for the rest of the kiddos. So now I am just taking little balls of that sculpting gel, and I am making his little paws. These are super simple. Once you have the head in place, you just put two little round balls on either side to look like paws peeking over the little fruit. 
I'm just shaping them into place with those silicone sculpting tools. These ones I got from Enel Couture in one of the scoops, but actually you can get them anywhere. Any nail supplier really will probably have silicone sculpting tools. I like using these versus a brush with alcohol for most shapes because I've noticed if I try sculpting with a brush with some alcohols, like a sub solution, um, it tends to water down the sculpting gel a little bit too much for my liking. But there are some situations where that might work better. For this instance though, these are pretty simple shapes, so I just use the silicone tools. And here I'm going in to make his little ears. So to do this, I took a ball of that sculpting gel and then I sort of made it into like an oblong shape, more of an oval, pinched one end and attached it to his head. And remember, I've been curing all of these pieces as I go. That way the head is nice and firm so that when I do attach those ears, I don't have to worry about accidentally messing up the head if I don't like how the ear turns out. And I know Cinema Roll's ears are typically a little bit longer, but for the sake of this design, I kept them pretty short, pretty cutesy looking, just because I know it was already a large charm and I didn't have a ton of room on the nail to work with, longer ears. But I'm pretty happy with how he turned out overall, so I threw him in the lamp to nuke while I worked on a little peach slice. Unfortunately, I was out of frame for most of this, which is why I go from just like a ball of clay to this peach shape, but really I'm just using the metal spatula because it's nice and long and flat. And then I actually go in with tweezers here, just metal tweezers, and I am creating kind of that like really textured bit of the peach that is right next to the pit on the inside of the fruit. The part that's usually like dark in color, a little bit fuzzy, almost spiky. I'm using the tweezers to kind of pull out some of the gel and create those spikes before curing that slice. Now I'm taking a pre-made charm. So this is just a regular bow charm, run in the mill. I'm sure a lot of you have these already. And I am creating a teeny and tiny little baby peach to go in the center of the bow. I was seeing this design all over, especially in, again, those inspo photos that I shared at the beginning of this video. I thought it was a really cute way to kind of customize a normal bow charm. So I'm just making a little peach shape here using those same silicone molding tools. Making this set and watching it back now it makes me really want peaches, especially the white kind. That's what the set is based off of, like the Asian white peaches. They're super yummy they have a nice crunchy texture that i love unfortunately uh i don't think they're in season yet here so i have not been able to find any but i'm super excited for when they do return now i'm just going through and i'm picking out which colors exactly i wanted to use for this set i picked the darkest color number seven and then two of the more sheer nudie peach colors i'm laying down that dark color first Add one part of the peach. I'm trying to create a blend here, like a real peach is all different colors. So I started with the brush that was in the bottle and I quickly realized I did not have much surface area to work with. And so I switched to putting just a little bit of each polish onto a palette. There's the colors. I was using number five and six and seven from that collection. And I'm going to go in with just a run-of-the-mill liner brush here and add more color. This is just a cheap liner brush that I think I got from like Timu or Amazon or something. Um, I don't love using it for lines. I actually just use it for painting smaller areas. Um, so like here I'm going in with all of the three colors and just blending them together all over that peach. The nice thing about these polishes being part of the same collection is that they do blend super well. If you want to see me work with them more, I do have a video that I made two weeks ago on just kind of like a really basic beach design. Here, I'm actually going in and cleaning off some of that first color because I didn't like that the peach looked kind of half and half when it came to the different colors. I wanted it to look a little bit more natural. So I'm adding some more of the other tones on that side of the peach. When you're using these syrup colors, it's also really nice that if you have like a deeper part or a groove in something that you've sculpted, 
the syrup will settle into those lines and it will help emphasize those lines. Usually if you're painting with a thinner paint, you'd have to go in and add layers if you want more color payoff. But since these are syrup and semi-sheer, they will settle into those deeper lines and help emphasize, in this case, the little crack of the peach. I, it sounds bad saying that because um, I think we all know what peaches are usually a euphemism for, but um, I guess it would be like the, uh, the furrow of the peach. I'm not sure, you get it. <laughs> Um, but I'm just going in here and painting the same colors onto that little mini peach on the bow. I don't know what was with me today. I was not in frame at all. Probably out of practice from having not made a set in quite some time because of how busy I've been, but that's okay. Here I'm going in with my short liner brush from Diami, and I'm using a Venelisa painting gel to try to do Cinema Roll's face. I quickly realized after putting on the gel, this color was a little bit too light. I thought it was gonna be perfect. So I went in with a slightly darker shade of the Venelisa painting gel. As someone who loves Japanese Korean nail art, but doesn't exactly always have the budget for everything being um, the top of the line, I actually really do like these Venelisa painting gels. You can get the entire set off of AliExpress, I think for like, 80 bucks and it comes with 60 different colors. I think if you are somebody who is really wanting to get into character art and more painted designs, they are a pretty good investment. The color payoff is pretty nice. Some of them, yes, are a little bit sheer, but I mean, for paying, you know, $1.50, maybe a dollar per paint, you can't expect too, too much. I am excited though, because I did pre-order the MPA art palette from Hay Nails, which is supposed to be like this amazing painting gel palette. That's supposed to be in the mail uh, sometimes in the next four weeks or so. I'm not exactly sure. It is a very high in demand pre-order, but I will be doing a review of that and some more character art when it arrives. I did also order some D gel paints that I've heard really great things about from people online other nail artists who work with character designs so i'm also really excited to try those i have them they're sitting next to me actually as we speak i just <sighs> the last month has been crazy it's kind of like that at the end of school every year but over the summer i should have a lot more time to try out all of the products that i recently ordered and get all of the nail ideas that i have rattling around in my head out onto some nails, which I am really excited for. I love doing nails. These are truly my happy space. <laughs> they help me de-stress, so I am ready to do some more painting over the summer. Now I'm just adding in the last few details on Cinema Roll, his cute little blushy cheeks with that darkest color, number seven from the Mayo Peach Collection. Mayo? Mayo? I... <laughs> Last time I made a video, I said I should look it up. Well, unfortunately, I still didn't look it up. Um, I've heard, I guess people call it mayo, so it's probably mayo. But here's the finished cinema roll charm, all painted. I think he turned out super cute. I went ahead and cured him, top and underside. Here's what he looks like on the nail. And now I can get into actually painting these nails with the under patterns. Here's me having a moment an existential crisis trying to figure out exactly what I want to do for the pattern underneath the nails. I had a general idea, but I was trying to figure out details in my head before I laid down any paints. I am going in with a coat of number one, which is the milky white on all of the nails to start with. I do this as a base for what will eventually become two peach nails, peach skin nails, two plaid nails and one hard nail. I was going for very like cutesy, coquette, summery, picnic-y type nails. I thought that would fit well with the peach theme. Part of me can't believe it's already almost summer. Well, I guess it is summer in most places here in Florida where I live, it's already in the 90s, but I mean, summer is in school is ending and it's almost June. Actually, in June, I turned 30. So that's another thing that I am having trouble believing. 
I look really young, so I think a lot of people assume that I am younger, um, maybe somewhere in my mid-20s, early 20s, but I am 29 and I am turning 30 June 2nd, so that is coming up here in about two weeks. It's an exciting thought, but also a little bit of a scary thought to know that my 20s are over. In some ways, I almost feel like it's too soon. I almost feel like I'm not 30 at all. Inside, I feel more like maybe it's still 25. Part of that probably has to do with COVID, honestly. That was, you know, two years that I really wasn't going out and living. I was working at that point, but I wasn't exactly like living life or doing as much traveling as I would have wanted. Part of it is also probably because, and I guess to get a little bit personal here, um, I had spent the early part of my 20s in a relationship that wasn't the healthiest for sure. Um, I was with somebody who didn't exactly support like my art or my hobbies. Um, we met in high school, so we were high school sweethearts, stayed together for a long time, I think just out of comfortability but I felt like I couldn't exactly be me with that person. So I think that also contributes to me feeling like, you know, I'm kind of sort of just now getting my life together and like figuring out who it is that I want to be, which is kind of strange for me because in high school, I was always feeling like I had everything set in stone. I, you know, was with somebody who I thought I would be with forever. I had a plan for college, a plan for a career right after school, and all of that kind of got thrown out the window with me and my partner breaking up, moving across states, starting a new career entirely, going back to school for said career. I'm currently trying to get my master's in education. I do have my certification, which I finished a few years ago, which is why I'm now working as a teacher but I almost feel like I am now where I wanted to be in my early 20s, which might contribute to why I feel a lot younger than I am. Um, sorry if that's all really personal. This channel is kind of, I don't know, just my place to share nails and share a little bit about myself. So um, let me know if you don't love the story time. I will try to keep it more focused to just nails, but I guess where I'm going with this is I hope if you are somebody out there who is feeling like you don't have everything figured out, who's feeling like maybe they're behind in life or that maybe they aren't doing it enough, um, just know that everybody else is probably feeling the same way. Even if on the outside, it seems like they've got everything together. I definitely pretended for a long time like I knew what I was doing, like I had everything figured out. And it wasn't until, you know, 25 when they say that your brain fully develops that I kind of realized um, that I didn't like how my life was going and that I wanted to change and so it's really been in the last five years or so that I feel like I've finally got my feet under me I have a career that I do enjoy even though it doesn't pay very well and I do work long hours during the school year I do really like it I've really gotten into my art hobbies more and I have a wonderful boyfriend now who's very supportive of all of my endeavors and really encourages me to try things. He was actually the one that really pushed me to do YouTube, so um, everybody say thank you to him. But yeah, I just hope that if you're somebody out there who's struggling to figure things out, I hope you know you're not alone. Um, everybody's struggling to figure things out, especially after COVID. I think the world changed pretty drastically. And I hope that you know you are not alone and that it's okay to be lost sometime. It all works out eventually in the end. I am a firm believer in that. And I feel like I am finally figuring out what I'm supposed to be doing and where I'm supposed to be. So long story short, I'm turning 30 in two weeks and I am a little nervous, but also very happy to be where I am in life at this point. Now that that rambles over, um, speaking back to the painting, I have finished the ombre for the peach nails, the peach skin nails, and I started on the stripes for my 
plaid nails. Here I'm going in with the reason that I got this set, which is number eight. It is this beautiful peach fuzz gel and I'm putting that over the peach skin nails, making sure to use a pretty thick layer, otherwise those fuzzy particles do tend to stick out of the nail. Now I'm going in with the horizontal stripes on my little plaid nails. I'm using all three colors, so number five, six, and seven. And here I am mixing together Born Pretty's Summer Jelly Collection Green Nail Polish, and this is number 18 from Tiny Sunset Collection. I needed a nice green to do the hearts on the middle finger and also to create a little leaf for the peaches. The Born Pretty Green is super vibrant, I do love it, but it is very sheer because it is a jelly polish, so I'm adding that darker green just to give it a little bit more opacity, a little bit more kick. I was totally out of frame when I filmed the beginning of these hearts, so you only get to see the end, but basically I took a little dotting tool and I did the arches of each heart with the dotting tool. You want to make sure that your dots are not touching each other, otherwise the gel is going to run and not have that really nice defined heart shape. So put two dots right next to each other, but not touching. And then you just go in here with a skinny liner brush. I'm using that Tiami liner brush to create the point at the bottom. This is by far the easiest way I found of doing small hearts like this. And now I'm just going in and adding more color to those hearts by lumping on more of that gel that I mixed. I am such a sucker for a good pink and green combo. This is not the first set I made in that color combo and fortunately or unfortunately for you, it will also not be the last, but let me know what your favorite color combination is down in the comments below. Here I am just taking some little resin hearts that I had, little pre-made charms, and I am painting that same green on the backs of them to create like a little custom green heart charm. These are meant to tie in that middle finger with the rest of the set. I will be putting these on the plaid nails. And I just stick them to a little nail form with some poster tack, just as a little holder. Cure them, and then you can peel them right off. And now I'm trying to figure out where exactly I wanted them placed. I decided over where the lines intersect was good enough. And here is the finished painted design for underneath all of the charms. Here's where I realized that I actually needed to do a little bit more painting on the charms. So I make like a makeshift stand here for the smallest charm, that little peach slice. I just use the end of a, a nail swatch and put some double-sided nano tape on it and then stick the peach to the end of this. It makes a really nice little handy stand for me to paint on. I knew I was going to be painting the sides here, so I didn't want to use a regular nail stand as it would have been too wide. I don't want to risk getting paint all over it. So I'm going in just with those pink peachy colors on the edge to look like the skin on the outside. Here's layer two of those colors. And this is actually the next day because I had been filming pretty late at night and I got tired, so I went to bed, reset, and came back energized the next day to finish the set. Here I'm taking that darkest pink and I'm putting it on those little spikes, those little divots I had made in the center of the peach slice. Like I mentioned earlier, all those little divots allows the nail polish to pool and create nice variation in color. So it really does look like the center of that peach where you have the little darker bits that cling to the pit of the peach. And now I'm realizing that I forgot a little leaf to go on the top of the peach, so I am just sculpting one of those now out of that same McCart glue. I think in the future though, I would probably do Cinema Roll's head and the peach out of the clear McCart nail glue, the 4-in-1 glue, just because I was noticing that it was taking a while to cure all the way through the middle of those bigger elements of the charm. And I don't want uncured gel around me or anybody who might order a set. For the leaf though, it worked perfectly fine because it was so thin 
Um, I actually flash cured this for about 10 seconds so that it was still pliable, as you can see here. That allowed me to mold it onto the peach and then give it a full cure in my light. This glue is slightly transparent, so it will go through the smaller elements like cinnamon rolls hands and whatnot. Just the peach, I think it had trouble penetrating all the way through. So now to get that true peach skin look, I am going in with the Vetsy Matte Top Coat. I, the Vetsy Matte Top Coat's okay. It's pretty thin. I actually don't love it though. So if anybody has any recommendations for a good matte top coat, definitely let me know. Um, the Vetsy one's okay. I've tried the Beatles. And it's okay too. I've tried Enel Couture. That one's fine. But I haven't found one that I love. Although I have ordered the Koopa top coat. I just haven't received it yet. It's going to take a couple weeks to get here. And so I am excited to try that out. I have heard good things about the Koopa matte top coat. Here I'm just cleansing the nails from that inhibition layer so that I can lay down a nice thick layer of base gel. This is actually just to smooth out any texture that's on the nail before I go in with a matte top coat. What I've noticed is that matte top coats tend to really show off any lumps and bumps on your nail, so I am just smoothing all of that out before I matte top coat everything. So here I'm doing that, just working in a really thin layer. I just want the matte effect, don't really need to build any shape or anything. And I'm going over the peach and cinnamon roll as well, leaving the leaf a little bit shiny, a little bit waxy. I will say the matte top coat from Betsy works well for these situations because it is so thin. I can go in with a little liner brush and get right in between all those grooves next to the peach leaf and not touch it. So my charm is finished. I have cured both the top and underside numerous times to try to make sure it's nice and firm. And it did. It was rock solid by the end. And now I'm using my trusty McCart rhinestone glue to affix it to the nail. Working with the nail tip covered in tin foil means that I can actually pre-shape it to exactly the curvature that I want for it to be able to stick really well onto the nail. Here I'm just adding a little leaf to the peach. I put down a white coat. You can think of it kind of like a primer so that I can put the green over it and it will show through. Then I'm using the Madame Glam Embossing Gel. This is their white non-wipe embossing gel, and I've really been loving it lately. I got it as part of a PR package, but I'm a big fan of the fact that it's non-wipe. That means I can put it on as a last step detail and not have to worry about like top coating it or wiping away a sticky layer and it losing its shine. So I am going to be using that as just an extra little detail for these plaid nails. First, I am gluing on the little heart here. I go in and I also glue on all of the rest of my elements so that I have all of my charms down before I can add those last final details. As you'll see though, I'm realizing that maybe there were steps that I should have taken in between. So this nail is fine, but on the thumbnail and on what's going to be the ring finger, there is a design element that I should have painted on first and then glued the charm over. But I was so excited about having the charms finished and I loved how they looked, so I went in and I glued them down before I really thought about what I was doing. That's okay though, I just paint around them. Here I am sealing in that bow charm and the heart charms with more of that McCart rhinestone glue, then going around them with the matte top coat, just to make sure everything was nice and smooth. Here I'm laying down what is supposed to be like a, a puddle of whipped cream, I guess. Um, I was going for like a peaches and cream theme with this one. So I'm using that non-wipe embossing gel. I actually end up not liking this later. I love the Madame Glam white embossing gel specifically because it does not self-level very much. It holds its shape really nicely, which is something you probably want from an embossing gel. So I'm trying to go in and lay down like really smooth peaches and cream peaks. So it almost looks like a, a whipped cream. But I found that the embossing gel was working a little bit too well when it came to holding its shape because I didn't love like the textured look it gave. I was trying to do some like purposeful swirls here, but 
I didn't love the end result. Here I'm using it though to create some lines of definition around those plaid lines. I do this because if I have a design element on one nail, I want it to at least be on another to make the design feel cohesive. So because I had used that embossing gel on the ring finger, I wanted to bring it into at least one of the other nails as well. And I thought outlining the checked look here would actually make it stand out more with the white. So I go in and I do really skinny lines with one of my favorite liner brushes. This is the Leaf Gel Long Liner Brush. It's so skinny. Look at how nice and smooth I can get my lines because of how small it is. Originally, I go all the way over the horizontal line I had placed, but I decided I didn't love that look. It was making like a weird bump because this is an embossing gel. So instead, I lay down the horizontal line and then I paint around it with the vertical line. And I actually think um, even just that little small break in the line there looks kind of cool. I don't know. It's a super teeny tiny detail that most people probably won't even notice but I actually think I like the way this looks. It almost looks like it's woven, like it's under the other line. So I'm looking at the design now. I'm trying to consider what else I might want to do. I take that IV multi-liner gel from Jin B. This is just a top coat, a non-white top coat that's a fairly thick consistency, but it comes with a nice liner brush and I am covering all of my shiny details with this. So I add a couple little water droplets to the peach and I go over the leaf and the little green hearts with this gel. All the products that I use will be linked in the description if I can find the link. So if you are interested in trying any out yourself, uh, you can check there. Somebody actually suggested that I do a products favorites video that I definitely think I will do sometime in the near-ish future. There are some things that I have coming on the way that I do want to try out first, just so I can include them in my video if I do like them. Here I am adding shine just to the interior part of the peach, so it looks like a nice, juicy, fresh slice of peach. I am such a big fruit fan. I know there are some people who don't love fruit, but me, I could eat it all day, honestly, probably because I have a big sweet tooth. Here I am just adding some pearls to that middle finger because I felt like it was lacking just with the bow kind of like floating in the middle of the nail there. Here's also where I realized that my nail was on my stand crooked. It was leaning a little bit too far to one side. So when I placed the bow in what I thought was the middle, it was not. So good tip, make sure before you place any charms, before you do any painting, that you check to make sure that your nail is actually affixed to your stand correctly. Otherwise, you will have wonky charm placement as I am realizing here, but it's okay. I just put some of that clear top gel over the pearls so that they don't lose their shine. And now I am drilling away that cream that I had put on the little peach slice nail. Cause again, I didn't love the texture it gave. So I'm actually just thinning out that embossing gel with a teeny tiny bit of top gel, non-wipe top gel. That way it will retain its non-wipe consistency, but it'll be a little bit more the texture that I am looking for. So here I'm just mixing that on a little palette. This is actually like an actual painter's knife. I love mixing with this because that is what it's made for. They're super cheap. You can buy them anywhere, even in person at like a Michaels. And because they're metal, they don't stain. One thing you do probably want to watch out for is maybe scratching your palette if it's just acrylic or resin, but it's not going to scratch it if you're careful. And I actually love placing liquid, things that are supposed to look gloopy and drippy with the palette, just because it forms really nice droplets on the edge that lay down like something that is very liquidy or gloopy, realistically would. I especially love this for any design that incorporates blood. I did a fun Halloween set that is in my nail tour, if you haven't seen that yet. I did a tour of all of my press-on nails. You can see that on my channel. It goes over different designs that I've done before, and I used the same spatula technique for a Halloween set that had some blood splatter, and it ends up looking really nice and realistic. 
I decided that I wanted to carry that, um, that cream look over to the thumb finger as well. So I just, again, use that spatula and dab on some of that white polish that I've created and look at how natural it looks. I think this also helped distinguish that peach from the same color that was in the background. That was my mistake when I was designing earlier. So overall, I actually think that was a really good idea to include that cream to offset the peach from the background and create contrast. Here I am doing the final touches, just filing those edges down. I always file my edges down at the end to get a nice crisp edge. I'm using a brush to wipe away the dust. And here is the final design. I am really happy with how these turned out. Um, I think they would be absolutely perfect if it weren't for the fact that the bow is slightly off center in that middle nail, but oh well, um, I will fix it if I make this set again. Here are my final shots. I decided to go outside and enjoy the sun for once, and I think it made it for a really nice background. Um, if you like this set, I will have it available on my Etsy to purchase. I do custom press-ons there if you would like to check that out in the description. I really can't thank you all enough for all the support you've shown. I do really appreciate it. Thank you for stopping by and I will see you in the next one. Bye! <laughs>